Hey friends, in today's video, I'm going to talk about my approach to Cauldron and the strategies I implement to get some more wins. I struggled a little bit to go flawless, but that's due to the low population and Telesto malfunctions. Telesto being a really good pick on this map. Uh, let's start with generic callouts on this map. So I call this the red side, even though it's a orangish uh, tint. This is prison cliff start, but I would just say red stair initial. This is lamp. This hallway right here, since this is on the side of red, this is red hall. Since that is on the side of bones, that is bone hall. This entire area is water. This is inner curve. This is bone room. Again, bone hall. This little exit point is called ribs. Talk about that later. As we get into mid, we see a pit right here. This is bone pit since it's on the bone side of the map. This is red pit since it's on the red side of the map. This is bridge. This is the initial bone spawn. I don't really know what to call this object. Maybe it's a giant bone, but maybe dumbbell would make sense. This is a platform. This is diving board. And I think that covers all of the popular callouts on this map. So now let's talk general strategy. And I want to preface this because I'm probably going to fail explaining this. General and advanced strategy doesn't really change much because these doors make this map miserable to play. It really comes down to having a crazier loadout than the opposing team rather than a defined strategy on this map because these stupid doors make it very difficult to get the drop on your opponent as a team. So that being said, I think I'm going to go into loadouts first before a uh, generic strategy since it does tie into it a little bit. On Hunter, I recommend you roll with Void. I'll talk about the alternate strategies later, but on Void, Capri Sting or you go Omnioculus. Gear Falcon will show up, but with Telesto being overtuned, I advise against it. Also, with the doors on this map, I find a traditional snipe a little bit better than a linear. Not that you couldn't use a linear, but you'll find it's a lot better on the open maps where that uh, low field of view makes for snapping to enemies a lot better. And so obviously you run it with Gear Falcon to try to body shot people who are like 5 below resilience or something. Okay, so Titan goes Peacekeeper or Antaeus, something like that. With Dead Messenger, Telesto, a Slug Shoddy, some Machine Gun, Sidearm, that type of thing. Warlock, I think you got two flavors. You go Dom Blade with Dead Messenger, Icarus Dash for speed. Or, might be a sleeper pick, but I think it's really strong in this map. Arc Warlock with the melee. Super, super good on this one. So now that you know the general team or loadout options, um, let's talk about generic strategy. So you spawn red side, I used to recommend instead of running to lamp that you fight for inside control, you fight for mid control. But in today's exact meta, not really the call. This angle right here is special jousting heaven. Special jousting meaning you're going to shoot your special weapon at them, they're going to shoot their special weapon at you, and you're just going to pray and hope that you win. It's not really a skill gap involved there, so I don't advise that. Also, you would think... Oh, well, I'll just use Radar, Manip, and Invis. No. Because if I go Invis, walk by this door, door opens, they know exactly where I am. Oh, I try to go around. Have to take this slow path, have to sprint. I'll be on the Radar no matter really what I do. So since Radar, Manip is not an option here, I feel like the only play is to go inside. So if you're sniping, this is the most common angle on the map. This is also special weapon jousting because someone's going to be on bridge. They're going to try to play these head glitches on the pillars. You're going to take a shot. They're going to take a shot. It's RNG on connection. I don't think it's worth it. A slight off angle is to try to look for a face in pit or from the opposite side. Look for the face of the common angle from pit and you, you might find it. You'll have a little bit more success using that angle. If I'm going to do any sniping from here, I like standing on top of the lamp and waiting for somebody to head glitch the coffin. And you will see just the tippy top of their head and you have some immediate cover to crouch. But you have to be aware of your radar for somebody flanks two red stairs. 
So I was talking basic strategy. If you want to send a teammate all the way over to bone room just to put a radar ping there, that makes sense. Ideally, you don't open this door until you get like right here. And as the door is opening, you fall back and get a stair head glitch and take your common angle. I don't advise going anywhere farther than this because you can really isolate from your teammates. So I would say that that is the basic red stair strat for initial. If you find you're playing a really aggressive team who runs all the way into red stairs, then I would say you push through all the way around the map and flip. So now let's talk about bone initial. For bone initial, I would send one person right here and all you have to do is look at the radar. If you see red, back down to bone with your team and now you're playing bone room and water, you can see mid. Why? Because it's special weapon jousting. Typically you're not even going to get challenged in mid. I rarely got challenged in mid. You could also hop here, but be careful for someone standing initial sniper. You might get the radar ping, get the heads up. I just feel like you have such an advantage on bone side to contest mid that a lot of teams understand that and don't even try to fight it. So that's basic strategy. Now, if we're talking advanced strategy, here's where the smokes start to come in. We're going to talk about using Kepri Sting or Omni Oculus to be an absolute pain in the ass. So what I like to do is, sure, you could shadow dive like this and then see the wall hack and do what you need with that, but I think the better play is to just throw a smoke right here and wait. Because while that's happening, your smoke is recharging. And you can just wait here and maybe you get a pick naturally anyway. But the smoke will eventually go off by itself and then you get your wall hack and then you know what to do with it. In a similar fashion, if you were using Omni Oculus, you could tell both your teammates to stand right here. Now the smoke's there. Then you tell them both to melee the air. Then you throw another smoke here. Melee the air. And now you have two free radar pings. Zero cost to your team since you were all going to move anyway. So then you come back here. Have a teammate open the door. Be very wary of this position with a shotgun. And try to create a scenario where your opponents are not looking at your teammates so somebody can full commit with their Kepri and just take a headshot on someone not even looking at them. So that would be the advanced strat. Now from Bone's side, let's talk about the advanced strat. For Bone's side, you take your mid control, assuming they don't push in. You usually have two teammates focusing this, maybe head glitching cough, and just all they're being is a distraction. They're not actually looking for a pick or any meaningful damage. All they're trying to do is get somebody down their scope so that they don't have radar uh, near that lamp. And so now this is my job as the Kepri Sting user. I go to diving board, I make noise, I put a smoke down, and I wait. I wait to see the radar move that direction, and then I return, I help with the fight for a second, and then I pop my invis. Go back towards diving board, preferably not make any noise, and now I have my wall hack. Then I will see their faces and the gun and the direction of what they're looking. And if they're looking at my teammates who are mid, that is free reign to go right here and start my flank. I can have the snipe out on this head glitch, or if I know it's more urgent, I go right here, try to make it as close distance as possible, and use my sidearm or SMG. And now this is the most important part. If I know that they're returning towards me, I tell my team to full commit. Fly through that little door. It literally doesn't matter what loadout they have, if they barricaded it, anything. It's fine. Fly through. If they start to move towards me, my job is just to live. I don't care about damage anymore. It's just to extend my life for as long as possible so my teammates can pop off. If they see me and start running towards my teammates, Maybe I have to push back to my teammates while simultaneously telling my teammates to back down and play their life. So that, that's like the push and pull. I feel like the bone spawn is superior to be honest. There is one strange strat and maybe off meta depending on what you use that the red stair initial can use. 
and that is abusing the dynamo and distribution perk on the helmet especially if you want to use something like raiju's harness on arc strider long term you run something like frosties high intellect high mobility run the sprint to get faster dodge cooldown right here spark of focus and then you want to run a threat detector weapon so you can tell that somebody is near you through the wall which means that dynamo will proc so ideally you just keep dodging into this wall because for some reason a player always stands here on power round for red initial I always go all the way through to green and by the time this happens the power is already being pulled so you pretty much don't have a choice if you spawn red initial it is really difficult to get power ammo so I try to open this door and just shoot this right here I know that I am toast unless my teammates fly in at the same time it feels like a losing battle, but honestly, that's because it is. The red side is a lot weaker for getting to power ammo. Um, on the subject of that dynamo distribution, I think Titan has a better loadout with Thruster, and you could still run Peacekeepers too. If you want to run Barricade, it's still fine, but you will get a Missile Titan faster than your opponents get anything. A Bubble Titan is also still very good since it's the uh, fastest charging super. Warlock Rift in this corner feels kind of weird. So maybe the play is like right here if you know someone isn't going to be on Coffin. Pop the uh, Rift right here. It would still probably work and that's a more useful Rift if you're working towards Dynamo. If you are going to do a Dynamo loadout, the off meta suggestion is uh, go Voidwalker with a child of the old gods and just try to pop that as much as possible in a place that not only gets you dynamo but supplies a useful rift to your teammates okay anything else i'm missing before i start showing you uh spots on the map okay i'm going to show you spots on the map so from red initial if you know you're playing a hyper aggro team that will run into your spawn this is where you want to go. You want to go into the bottom left to get rid of this turn back zone. Jump, shatter dive immediately. And now you are in biz for 5.8 seconds. Enemy team runs through. They're blissfully unaware of your position. Do not shoot them immediately. Wait until you have a prime opportunity to take out more than one person or feed information to your team. So as you're shooting the first person, the second person doesn't know what the hell is shooting them. Maybe you have a trick smoke from your other teammate right there or something like that to really get them to salivate and run through. Get your single or double, and now you can't use that spot again because they're aware of it. If they still push through and you want a different angle than the lamp, you can go right here. Your feet are protected. So essentially it's the same angle as this, except you're protected from people on bridge. Okay, now we have some bone room. You also get on like these wall spots. There's all sorts of little nicks and crannies here. Um, fun video to watch is my Halloween special from not this recent Halloween, but the one previous. Where I went invis with the good invis and just completely broke some ankles and had people chasing ghosts in the uh, freelance playlist. So yeah, just pop invis, sit up there for a sec, someone runs under you. The problem is this part of the map is very uncommonly played. So it's pro you're probably not going to get any mileage from that spot, but I'll show you a couple others on this side. Okay. Uh, this structure right here. It's like a little triangle you can stand on. And if you didn't know, you can shoot through these bars. I believe you can even stand on them on a specific spot, but I don't really use it that much. 
As far as map jumps, you can always go around these angles, get your turn back zone for as long as possible. A lot of people don't think about this in the heat of combat, but you absolutely can just go around and under this bridge and keep your head protected. That's why I run triple jump. It lets you abuse the map a little bit more. Delay your jump so you can recover more before the fight happens. Okay, I think I have talked about most things on this map that are important. Now let's talk about the actual meta. So Hunter Recommendations, Kepri Sting, Omnioculus. There are a couple other options, but those are going to be your main two. I like Omnioculus more on this map. Although Kepri's is super useful, I find that having a smoke at every doorway is much more consistent with how aggressively some teams play. As far as the weapons go, traditional snipe over linear fusion because the door is opening to give you an indication of where to aim gives you enough time to set up the headshot with the snipe a lot easier. The low FOV of a fusion rifle is useful, but you will find on more wide open maps that this FOV is much more useful and you could use Gear Falcon with it. As far as weapons go, Terraba, Devil's Ruin, Trespasser, Drang, Typical sidearm, typical SMG. Don't overthink it. You can go a slug if you want to change it up. Cool guy just did a video on the Inquisitor. I recommend you look at it. Apparently there is a range cap on shotguns. Alternate hunter loadout. Go with the uh, super suit on Arc Strider. Swap to Raiju. I don't like the swap, but it is there. And then maybe Gemini Stasis with the big dust field grenade. Try to use the dust field to keep people from crossing the hallways for free. Crossing the uh, doors for free. On Titan, Peacekeeper, Dune Marcher, Antaeus. I think the MVP on this map is Antaeus. Never forget about Telesto because it is broken this week. Warlock, Dawnblade with Dead Messenger, Icarus Dash to Chase. Or you go Arc. The Arc Soul is pretty decent, but the melee is really what makes a difference on this map with how much people tend to cluster. You will get entire team wipes with just the Arc melee. Past that, I think I've covered it all. Hope you learned something new in this one. See you in the next.